welcome, okay, Desiree, who yes, is officially known on Instagram as the official smiley Asian because she has those Asian eyes and she's always smiling, okay? Mm -hmm. And I came to know you because a lot of people probably are like, who is this? Why is yes, she on the channel? Well, there's a reason. I came to know you two years ago when I saw a video a very disturbing video. But I got a record of this. Stay calm, baby. Yeah. You're alive. Be grateful, baby. Be grateful that you here. You here today to talk about it. Cause guess what? They try to take you, but God said, no, he got a purpose for you, Desiree. Are you um yes, you literally almost lost your life because you were beat almost to death on your own birthday. Yes, ma'am. And I remember seeing that video and I'm like, I don't care what anybody has done. And I saw people that filmed it. No one came to help you. It's like they were just recording and you were like, help me, help me. And they just thought that it was just video footage and uploaded it. And your story went viral from there. I remember all of the major media outlets picked it up. Um, I saw it, of course, before the major media outlets picked, picked it up. And you have since recovered. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, it's, I, I'm shocked now to see you back Okay, going viral for something totally different, but this time it's a life or death situation again. I'm just telling you people now, y'all better cherish your life. <laughs> because you never know. <laughs> you just never know. You just cherish your freaking life. Like, cherish your life. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and it's involving some illegal butt injections that you received when you were what age? About 18. 18, and how old are you now? 25. Okay, now I came to know this story again on the blogs. You were going viral. And I saw one of uh, a blogger, one of the bloggers that I follow post, and she was about to donate because you have a GoFundMe asking uh, your followers, because you have almost about 200,000 followers on uh, Instagram, to help to fund your surgery because now you're having some life or death complications and people are confused as to whether or not this is a scam or not. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I've been following her for two years. Um, she has never been known to scam anybody. You've always been extremely transparent. And so for those that have any uh, questions about whether or not your GoFundMe uh, is a scam or whether or not your current medical dish condition is a scam, I want you to dead that now. And I want you to start from the beginning on how uh, this happened, the decision that you made up until now. And so please, the, the floor is yours. So I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak my piece for one. Anytime, uh, just very anytime. Grateful for that. Um, and so basically, I were I was just like all the other girls, just kind of wanting to look a certain type of way when I was younger, not really having that mother to guide me in the right direction, just kind of doing whatever I wanted to do. So what I had went ahead and did was I went down to Dallas, Texas, um, and I heard about these shops. So I went there um, to go ahead and get some injections. I knew that they were not legal. Like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't know that they were illegal. I knew that they were illegal. But the, when I went there to the people, they reassured me that they worked for a doctor's office before and that they were getting this, these supplies from the doctor's office because they still had somebody in connection there. And so... When I went in for the first time, it was like 30 to 40 girls in there to get it done. So I feel like if all of these girls are getting it done, it shouldn't be a problem. It, it's, very, it's a very common thing, you know? And so I went ahead and I did it. Then everything was fine. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, you have the perfect body now. Your body looks good. So other girls wanted the information as well. So I passed it on to other girls. I passed it on to a lot of other girls. And so... Oh, tell that little one we said, hey, I hear him in the yeah, background. I had, to, <laughs> I had to get her a puppy dog house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. And so 
I went ahead and was passing on the information to other girls as well because I wanted them to feel good. And then, you know, if, you, if I didn't pass on the information, they were going to be like, oh, you're hating on me or you don't want to tell me. So I, I passed the information on to anybody that I knew I could help out that wanted to have this certain look. Okay. Well, okay. everything had been going just fine. Well, in 2015, I had read an article that the people that had did my injections had killed somebody. So, wow. it brought awareness to me, but then I guess because it really wasn't me, I really didn't care about it. You know what I mean? Because okay. Can you name, I, can you, do you remember the names of these people? Because I, I kind of want to put their faces up since they're, they're, they're currently locked up, correct? Yes, yes, ma'am. So, okay. Uh, they called the lady, her name is Wee Wee. Okay. Um, I remember her, the Wee Wee button injections. I remember that. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Okay, so Wee Wee is the first one. And so her name is Wee Wee. Her real name is Denise, I believe, Ross. Okay, and then there was this transgender. We called him Alicia, but his real name um, was Joe Clark, I think, or something like that. Um, so basically, I read this story about how they did this woman, and they kind of left her there for dead. So I was like, okay, but I didn't pay no attention because nothing was going on with me. Okay. So I was like, you know, I don't, I don't, I won't, I won't say I didn't care, but I really didn't because it wasn't me or a family member of mine. And the lady that passed away, her name is Waukesha Reed. Um, you know, she just, she just passed away trying to have this look and they left her there. So they finally got tried. They finally got their time in 2017, which was last year. Okay. They had been out on um, bond and everything because they had been making. Man, they had like 30 to 20 girls there, and each girl was spending a thousand dollars. They were making over 20 to 30 thousand dollars a day. Wow. Doing black market butt injections, and so it's more than what was, what dope dealers are making. They were getting some serious money. And so um, recently, why I um, you know, went ahead and shared my story was because recently I had started, maybe about three to four weeks ago, I had a knot in my back. And my I was telling my grandmother, like, something doesn't feel right, even though I know my body. And she was like, no, baby, you know, you're just stressed out. It's okay. You're going through a lot right now. Just, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. And so I was like, okay, it's going to be all right. So then a week later came, it got worse. And I was like, something's not right. And she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I, I, like, I, I feel like, like something is in my back. And she was like, nothing is in your back, girl. Just hush, you know. Mind you, she don't really know I went and got these butt injections. Okay. So you didn't tell so, anybody from your family? No. Okay, and they didn't notice a difference in your shape or anything? They did, but I think since it was so long ago, people don't, they didn't really care about it. Like, they just like, thought maybe you really, gained weight or something. Yeah, they didn't pay it any mind because I didn't get too, too much. I had like a little natural, you know? Yeah. So they don't know, they don't, they don't know if I went and got it the correct way or the wrong way. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. They don't know if I got a real surgery or a... Um, a botched surgery, like you know, messed up surgery. They don't. They don't know. They're older. They don't. They. They. They, they didn't. They didn't grow up in this generation of the things that you know young kids are doing now. So okay. They don't. They no. Okay. And so, um, I was like, you know, my back is hurting. And so she's just like, you know, well, just go ahead and go to the doctor. So I mean, like, I was so so much in pain that I couldn't drive. So I called an Uber. So I went ahead and went to the doctor. The doctor said, oh. Um, nothing is wrong. You have an infection in your back, which is an abscess or something like that. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with you. We're going to go ahead and put you on some antibiotics, some pain medicine. And in three to five days, your pain will go away. Okay. So, okay. I was like, all right, cool. So five days come, seven days come. It's worse. Now I can't move. Now I can't get out the bed. Now I can't get up and do anything. I can't brush my kids' teeth. I can't take a bath. I can't do nothing. Now I it feels like I have a brick in my back. Oh wow! And so, um, basically, like if I would try to lean down, it felt like my muscles were pulling. It felt like something. It felt like something was on top of my muscles. And so I was just like, you know. Like, something is not right. Something is not right. I'm going back to the hospital. 
So I went back to the hospital. So when I went back to the hospital this time, I was like, some, I, was, I was like, I mean, I'm about to have a heart attack. I had to just, I was like, my heart is beating real fast. I'm having shortness of breath. I'm about to have a heart attack or something. Can y'all please tell me what's wrong with me? So they did um, all of this, these lab results and everything, everything, a, a CAT scan and everything, and then they came back. And the doctor was very, very rude. I'll never forget him. He said, oh, you just have silicone in your back. And I was like, silicone? And he was like, yeah, you just have silicone in your back. Have you ever had any injections done? And I said, yes, I've had injections done. And he said, well, you need to go back to the people who did your injections. Mind you, these people are there in jail serving 60 years apiece for the things that they've done. Okay. So I can't go back to them, and I definitely didn't want to go back to them. Okay. And so um, I was like, well, can y'all get, can y'all get it out? He said, no, we can't get it out. You have to go reach a plastic surgeon. I was like, well, you're a hospital. You know, you can't help me. No, we can't do anything for you, ma'am. You know, uh, we brought you some prescription medicine, and you have a great day. Bye-bye. Just like that. So at that that point in time, like, I just remember laying in that hospital bed feeling like I was about to die. I was so hurt, and I knew what I had done to myself at that point in time. Like, I knew that it was my fault. It's okay. It's okay. She helping mommy tell her story. It's okay. And so I knew that it, I knew that at that time, like, I messed my own self up, you know? I was sitting there, I was crying, I was just hurt, I was, I felt all types of emotions. I didn't know whether I was going to die tomorrow, or the day after that, or what. I, I saw know. the, I saw the video that you put up on, on Instagram, and you were laying in the hospital bed. Was that right after you got the news? Yes, I was, I was like boo-hoo crying. No, I saw it, and I'm going to play it here so people can can see it. And um, so I saw you because a lot of people were questioning whether or not this was real, and I'm like, why is why would someone lay up in a hospital bed crying, letting you know what they have done, clearly done to themselves, and they're just pleading for help? How can I write this? And so when people, when I did, so let me just tell you, I thought about it for a couple of days before I actually came out to the world to tell the world. I actually confined in my own family first and asked them, hey, you know, what should I do? You know, things like that. Because I had no idea what was going to happen to me and what I needed to do next because this was something all new. My grandmother got mad at me and said, "Nobody told you to put that shit in your body." As a grandmother, you know, as a grandmother should. Say. You know, okay. so she was mad, so I didn't get any support from there. Um, I, I really don't have my mother around because if I had my mother around, I probably wouldn't have done something like that in the first place. Okay. You know? Where's your mom? And, uh, ma'am. Where's your mom? She's around, but she doesn't. Me and her are not close. And we don't have a relationship because of the things that I've done when I were younger to her. Like, I used to steal her car. I used to go out to the club. I was 15 years old. I had no business being in the club. I would use her ID to go to the club. I would be out all night in her car, and she can't get to work in the morning. It was a lot. I was a bad kid, you know? Okay. And I can admit to that, you know? But A lot of a lot of kids yeah. can't. So, I mean, and, and it's now that you're, you know, 25, correct? And yes. you see that. Yes, I hurt my mom a lot. And so to this day, she's still holding on to those grudges of what I've done at that age. Instead of saying, you know what, you were a kid and you didn't know any better. She still holds those grudges. So me and her, you know, we don't talk. Okay. And and I'm okay with that. Have you apologized to her? Yeah, I have. But if, if this is how I look at it. I have friends that have murder charges. I have friends that have shot people to death. I have friends that have killed people and done really bad stuff, and their moms are always there by their side. I ain't done nothing but take your car, and you don't want to talk to me for the rest of my life. Like, you know, like, that's something that you have within your within yourself that you have to fix and I'm tired of being the, the daughter and having to be the bigger person when you're the mother and you should be setting the example for me okay so 
I feel like there's nothing like a mother's love. Do I, I feel like I wouldn't go through half the stuff that I'm going through or went through if I had my mother around. So to all mothers out there, don't give up on your children because you never know where it will lead them, you know? Okay. Well, and, okay, my mother grew up in the hood, um, matter of fact, in the same house that I'm in right now. Okay. And she acts like she's better than everybody else, you know? And my problem with her is that she doesn't take care of her mother, so I feel like I shouldn't take care of my mother. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, my grandmother struggles a lot. So I see my grandmother get up every day and go to work and still not have money for bills. So that made me want to go strip. That made me want to go be in the streets because I had to take care of my grandma because my mother would. Okay. So at that point in time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get these butt injections. I'm going to have this body. I'm going to be looking good. I'm not going to get too much, you know. And I'm just going to get enough to make me look like I got something. And so I went ahead and did that. So then my mother, she just, even though she doesn't accept me for who I am, I still laugh every day. I still smile every day. I, I'm still cool with that. And when when she's ready to come around, she'll come around. But I feel like with what's happening to me now, she doesn't care. But once I start impacting the world, then she will come to her senses of oh. everything that I did was actually, in reality, a help for me. Okay. Okay. Um, let's talk about, and that was very, uh, that was very deep. And hopefully she'll be able to kind of watch this and see. I mean, I, I know kids can take mothers and their parents through shit. But, I mean... <laughs> I can understand if my daughter tried to take my life, then maybe, okay, I'll be like, all right, let me stay the hell away from her. But um, it's glad that you do recognize, like, I wasn't the best child. I made some mm -hmm. mistakes. You know, she made some mistakes, and I'm willing to get over it. And hopefully after this, your mother and you will be able to come, to come together, especially through your healing, because this is going to be, um, once you have your surgery, you know, uh, it's it's going to be a rough recovery. Yeah, it is. And you got two, and you got two small kids, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so let's, let's pick back up. So you're out of the hospital and you're home. How is your, how is your health now? So I, I went out of the house, I got out of the hospital and I went home after the doctor told me that I had this silicone. So I didn't know what to do. I was, I, you know, I, every second, every minute, everybody I would talk on the phone, I would just break down and cry. And so I basically asked God, should I reveal this to the world or should I keep this to myself and just die slow? And I just said, you know what, I'm just going to make a decision to just Tell everybody so I can get help because I need help. And at that point in time, I had to take my pride out the situation and just go ahead and do what God wanted me to do and let him work through me. And so when I got home, you know, I was still in pain. They put me on pain medicine um, and all of that and everything was totally Okay, you know, everything was okay, but I was still in pain. But what changed my outlook from me being sad to the courage that I have now is I was freaking my kids out mm. because I was in so much pain. It was it was scaring them. And Are you still in pain it, right now? I'm in pain, but... It's not as bad as it is. It's because I have so much medicine that I'm on right now. Mm. Um, taking so much pain medicine, I think that it's just kind of like coming and going when it wants to. So it, it's it's like a I'm still in pain. I have shortness of breath, but it like this thing is like a disease that attacks you when it's ready to attack you. It's gonna take you down when it's ready to take you down, type of thing, you know. And 
I remember breathing really, really hard the other night. I was breathing really hard. I was having shortness of breath. I didn't know if my breathing was cut off or what. And I told my son, I, I wouldn't go to sleep at night. When the doctor told me what, happened, what I had in my body, I wouldn't go to sleep at night because I was scared that I was going to not wake up the next morning. And so I went ahead and it was two o'clock in the morning. It was the other day. And I told my son, hey, he's seven years old. I said, I woke him up out of his sleep. I said, Malcolm, get your, your cell phone. I said, if anything happens to me and mommy don't wake up in the morning, please call 911. And the look on his face was devastating. Like, he was so scared. And I would like nod off a little bit and he'd be like, mama, mama. Like he was watching me the whole night to make sure that I woke up or that nothing happened to me. And after I seen that hurt on his face, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna hurt my son like that. I'm not gonna hurt my kids like that. I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna fight this, and I'm just gonna walk around and I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna make myself get up and cook breakfast. I'm gonna make myself get up and take a bath. I'm gonna make I'm gonna fight this because I'm not about to sit around in my misery and cry and be sad over a choice that I decided to make. And so since then I've been in better spirits. I'm like, I have to be strong for my kids. They don't have anybody else. And I feel like at first, when I first went through it, I was not praying for God. Now I've been on my knees repenting and telling him that I need him. Everything that I've done wrong, I've been just confessing everything on my hands and knees and really giving him everything out of me. And I feel like he took some of that pain that I had away to where it was able to where I could do for my children. And I truly believe in the higher power that he really is like watching over me, but it, it still has to come out of me because it's going to attack my body again, you know, <laughs> and, and people think that this is something to play with and it's not nothing to play with because these type of, um, material do, does not belong in your body. It does not belong in your body. Industrial grade silicone does not belong in your body. Have you, when we were talking on the phone the other day when I saw you and I was just like, and I jumped in your DM, I said, uh, you know, give me a call. You said that you you started having some light symptoms um, recently before it really started to attack your body in this way. And it, and it has me kind of, you know, it had me worried when you said um, you were having problems breathing. And because yes. I, I want because there are a lot of people that have this and they may look over the symptoms that you looked over because you thought it was just something, you know, like maybe it was just a nerve or maybe you probably uh, hurt yourself. But now you're having problems breathing and that can be a, a preliminary uh, embolism, which means that silicone is traveling to your lungs and yes. that can be fatal at any time. And. and you know what? I just, I, I want to say this, like, with my whole heart. If I were to die tomorrow because of this, if anything were to happen to me because of this, I would be so proud of the person that I became through this, this story. Like, I would be so happy because I still saved so many girls from doing what I did. I still save so many girls from wanting to do this. And I feel like even if something was to happen to me, I served my purpose. I did what God wanted me to do. And I'm not going to lie. I'm scared. But I'm not scared because I trust that God didn't bring me this far to just drop me off right here. And... I have so many young girls in my DM right now, 60 to 100 of them, that are scared to tell people what they're going through. I just thought I was just going to die and, and it just be a secret. I was going to take it to my grave. you giving me so much courage. You know, you're giving me so much. You're giving me so much courage to do better. You're giving me so much courage to to take care of myself. And so because of that, like, 
I'm so proud of who I am right now. I'm so proud that that I'm not I'm not a, a little girl anymore. I'm a grown up now. And grown ups can make the decisions that I make. I had people say, You're a scammer. You just want money. Let me tell you something. After I get that surgery done, I'm still gonna be back to zero dollars. I'm still gonna be back because that, that money's not going to me. That money's going to my doctors. So at the end of the day, I'm still going to be back to where I am, where I was. But I, it doesn't matter. Even if people don't want to help me and people don't want to donate, it, they don't want to donate is because of their own insecurities of things that they've done and things that they've lied about. And they feel like, well, they, they know it all too well. I'm not like that. I've never fit in with anybody. I don't care about the hate and the backlash. I don't even have a Facebook I've never fit in with the crowd. I've always been that triangle that try to, to can't, she just can't go in a circle. I can't go in a circle of people. I'm just not. I'm very different from others. And I'm, and people, I had threats in my DM. I wish you died. You're on borrowed time. Um, I mean, and these, these, do these people know you that's sending you death threats? Um, some probably know me, some probably don't, you know, wow. you just never know what, what a fake page is coming from. And it's just like, you know, I feel like God used me in this situation to see who's really for him and who's really against him. Because now he sees that all of these people that are saying anything bad, they work for the devil. All of these people that are sending their, their their blessings, they work for him. And he needed to see for with a clear eye on who's who. And who's better to use than this fearless young girl that is brave and doesn't care and has the courage to help other people. It takes a brave person to try to save other people while she's saving herself. And I and I I want to jump in real quick, and I love I want to say that I love your spirit, and I, I can't Thank even you. imagine that you have this much energy being on the amount of medication that you're on, meaning pain meds. You know, I have a lot of um, uh, family members in my family that are addicted to pain meds, and you know, it gives you uh, totally different symptoms, but you are pushing through. Um, you are a single mom, yeah. and um, I want to talk about. Real quick before we wrap this up and tell and ask people to donate, I'm actually going to make my donation right here in front of everyone. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about those symptoms because I know that girls okay. are getting these every day. The symptoms are going to start out with knots. Okay, you're going to feel a knot somewhere in your body. Don't ignore any little pain that you have. I don't care if you cough in different. I don't care if your pee is a different color. You, anybody that has these shots, needs to pay attention to any changes in their body. Because everybody has different ways um, of symptoms showing to them. And I just want other girls to know that don't ignore any hurt or pain that you're going through. Because it's going to come back. I, rem I, I remember talking on the phone with you and you said that somebody would slap your butt and it would start to sting. And this was yes. this was before your body started yes, to shut down. Me. Yes. If I would itch my butt, it would sting. It would hurt. If I would run and I'm running so fast and you know how your butt goes up and down, mm -hmm. I would have so much pain. But I just never paid attention to it. You know, I was like... I knew in my heart that something wasn't right, but God, when I needed to, I needed to let God show me. I needed to let God show me that it that it wasn't right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't know. Sorry, I, I, I'm trying to be a mama too. And, Handle your business, girl. Handle your business. Okay. And um, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know. What it, you know, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into when I did this, but now I know what I got myself into. I have to save other girls. You're gonna have this stinging sensation, you're gonna have a different color pee, you're gonna, um, your body is gonna start getting tired, 
You're going to be really restless all the time and lazy and not understanding why you're so tired. And you're thinking that, oh, I'm just working so hard or whatever it is, man. No, that's not the case. It's this, it's this disease that's taking over your body. And, that, and that's what it is. It's the disease that's taking over your body. I'm walking around right now with silicone in my body, not knowing what day and when I'm going to die or if I'm going to get it taken care of. All I'm doing is just trying to bring awareness to other girls that are going through the same thing and that are scared to to tell. I've had people tell me that now that I've said something, people have told me that their kidneys start failing because they did not take um, precautions to the, the, the little symptoms that were happening at first. They just kept saying, oh, it, it went away, so it's gone. Then three months later, your kidneys are failing. And then... After your kidneys are failing, your this girl she says she's on a dialysis machine. You know what I'm saying? And at 24 and 25, I can't imagine all of these girls' kidneys failing like that. Mm. And and I remember you telling me when we were on the phone that she, when you got your shots, you ended up taking others with you. Yeah, I took so many girls down there. And let me tell you how the process of the shots work. So. We went to, um, they wouldn't give us the address until we were actually there in the city. When I would take these girls there, I was really also being on some evil stuff too. Because these people would charge a certain amount and then I would tell them, oh, they're actually charging this much. Oh. And making my own set of money out of the situation. And... Maybe that's another reason why I'm going through what I'm going through. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But Car I mean, karma know. Karma has no date, no time. Yeah. It's just, you know, for every re for every um, action, there's a reaction. And so, yes, and for you to even get up here and admit that, you didn't have to tell us that. You could have just been like, I'm dying and I don't know. I just need the money to possibly save my life. You nah, know, I, you I, didn't I, have to share that information. I didn't even know that until you just said it. So yeah, like I was actually doing that. I was actually making my own money off of the situation because I would tell the girls they would say, "How much does it cost?" And I would tell them, like, I, I, I'm gonna just be honest. I would go and tell the people, just do them a half, which costs about five hundred, but make them think that they're getting a thousand dollar job, and I would keep five hundred. And they, they would get their five hundred. It was it was Okay, like, so you were working with both of the people at one time. Not I mean, I had got so close with them because I was going so much and I just confined in these people. I wouldn't say I was working with them, but I was just broke at the time and I mean money everybody wants some money. You know what I mean? So I hope that doesn't make me seem like a bad person because... I mean, go ahead. Keep talking. And I'll give my, my thoughts on that. I mean, I hope it doesn't make me seem like a bad person. But it really wasn't right. It wasn't right. And and I'm, I'm wrong for that. I'm, I'm wrong for that. And Have any of the girls, have any of the girls that you've uh, recruited... Have they started showing symptoms and signs? Have you reached out to them and have you been in communication yes. with them? Yes. Everybody that I have took are having problems. Oh, wow. Everybody that I took are having problems. And then I even, um, the people that are not having problems, I just kind of let them know, hey, I'm having these issues. You might want to go to the doctor and make sure that it's not in your bloodstream because as soon as it's in your bloodstream is when you're about to die. And is and it in your so, bloodstream? It's not there yet. Okay. It's not in the bloodstream yet. So I'm trying to get my surgery taken care of and get it out before it does get in the bloodstream and you can't get it out the bloodstream. So once it goes into your... So what happens is when these people put these shots, they'll lay you on this table. They'll that they're, you're, You'll come into... A, um, it'll have like a spa place on the outside. But in the inside, it's really butt injections. They lay you on this table. Um, 
they lay you on this table and they tell you just to chill out. It's two people there and there's somebody there massaging your legs while you get it done. It is the most painful thing in the world. Because what they're doing is they're putting these butt injections into your muscles. And they're putting them into your muscles. And that's what's making them it's, accept the butt. And it's, I can imagine, so they're in, okay, they're injecting this industrial grade silicone right into the muscle and it's causing the muscle to spread, which is causing the muscle to break down, which causes inflammation and pain. Exactly. So they're, they're putting it straight into your muscle. So when that girl died, what they actually did was they missed her muscle and hit her vein. Yeah, because you do have two main uh, blood vessels going right there. And that's why a lot of girls, and I'm going to show a picture here, when you see them with butt shots or even with um, fat transfers, you'll notice that the part where the back is is flat and it's mostly wider on the outside because you do have two main blood vessels that are going through there. Yes, and that's why it's important for if anybody is doing any sort of uh, cosmetic uh, procedures that they do go to a licensed uh, plastic surgeon I, because... I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that either, not to, to, um, to, to cut you off, Tasha K, but I've even had girls say I've been to a licensed surgeon and I'm having issues. Oh, wow. I've gotten a, uh, some girl told me that she got a fat transfer and now she has neurosis or something on her, on her liver or something. Like, it's... It, and see, these are the things that we don't hear about. And the only reason I said that is because I would much rather, I, I would much rather for no one to alter their bodies unless there is a, a, a reason. Maybe you are a burn victim or maybe you lost a limb or breast cancer mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest it at any time. And that's what this platform is for, to bring awareness to these types of things. A lot of people get mad. Like I just called out Cardi B the other day. She has an $800 ass. You're having seizures. You're tired. You're having medical problems. And the fact that you are even sharing this saying these are symptoms. Of, of these of these procedures and so it may be due to exhaustion but this exhaustion has something to do because you have a do with you having a foreign object in your body and what pisses me off about those people in the media like yesterday I responded to 400 people 400 400 people because I want to be that type of person that I don't give a damn how many followers I got. They know that the love is real here. Because you got these famous people like Kay Michelle said that she was going to help young girls out. I have not seen one young girl that she has helped out. All I see is her raging on the internet and raging on loving hip hop and still being herself after God has saved her from this situation. I seen another girl. Her name is Body by J. I asked her for advice and she told me to get my hustle on. And she had the same issue. And y'all, you ladies are having these platforms and you guys are not bringing awareness to this situation at all. At all. Cardi B, you got a fake butt done. You should be trying to reach out to every young girl that got a fake butt done instead of trying to fight and feud with Nicki Minaj. There's bigger issues out here in this world than what you guys are going through. And let's not forget, and, Nicki Minaj got a fake ass too, but uh, like I said, yeah. when she took off those three months, I think she went to fix it because it looks way different than what it looked like before. And what I just want to just say is this. I don't care about none of that. I'm going to be different because I am going to help these young girls. I don't give a damn if it takes like one the every last breath of me. I don't give a damn if it's just consulting and listening to their story and just giving them words of encouragement. Any little bit can save somebody's life. Yeah. Those mean comments that they're telling me, you know, what if I wake up one day and say, I'm just going to kill myself because these people are just saying all this bad stuff. Like, what would you guys think about that? Did you you guys say, oh, oh my gosh, rest in peace to her. Oh my gosh, post me everywhere. Well, I, I think I it's, I think, and I don't mean to cut you off. It has to do with they don't dis, they don't know. It's like a a boundary. It's like is this real life? 
You know, they, it's like, they don't, it's like, oh, I can say what I want to say on the internet, but not thinking like this is real life. You know, you know what? I, I blame society. I blame society. I blame the music that we listen to. I blame these Instagram models. I blame all of that on the reason why these girls are insecure today. And I actually am so proud to be where I am and to be able to speak about this at this point in time because when God gives me this platform right now, I promise him that I will help other girls. I promised him that I will save his children. I promised him that I would do that or he could take every breath of me away. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring awareness to this situation. I'm going to ruffle people feathers. I'm going to make people not like me. People are going to hate me because it's going to start taking away money from them. It's going to start making people go to the, the doctors less. It's going to start making people not want plastic surgery. It's going to make people not even want to walk around with no little bitty clothes on. The people in the manufacturers are going to lose money. Rappers are going to lose money. The people, the doctors are going to lose money. Magazines are going to lose money. Everybody's going to lose money because of what I'm saying. And I do not care because I'm sick of this evil world. I'm sick of people being so evil and not caring about other people and not caring about what these girls go through and just putting that these girls on naked videos and shaking their butts and doing all of this and rapping to this horrible music that don't make no sense. Like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, and I'm going to tell everybody, and I'm going to uh, make people mad, and people are going to try to hurt me. People are going to try to do everything to take me down, but I promise I'm ready for this fight. I'm ready to go to surgery. I'm ready to do all of this. I'm ready okay. for it. And so I appreciate you coming on here to share your story. I mean, I was just floored just to kind of see you in the media again, and I'm like, what is this? Like, you almost lost your life once, and now, of course, that wasn't your fault. I, I don't give a damn. You got jumped, um, and they took it a little bit too far. Yeah, they did. They really did. They did. They really, really did. And um, I, I just, I don't believe in that. And so even with you sitting here telling everything that you did wrong, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't excuse it. It doesn't excuse that you are still a mother mm -hmm. and you have children that you have to live for. And every single body makes mistakes. And the fact yes, that you're yes. on a public platform saying that I took all these girls, I uh, uh, overcharged them. And now those same girls you're mentoring to and you're, you're helping mm -hmm to work through their same issues or even telling them, even though they don't have issues, like this is what you need to look out for. Because, you know, sometimes it does take a life or death situation for us to wake up and see that this is real life. It's not Instagram. It's not a, yeah. it's not a music video. This is yeah. real damn life. And I, I just want to thank you for just being all the way transparent. And Excel. I'm going to make my donation here. Okay, I'm going to your actual Instagram page, which is the official Smiley Asian. Of course, I'm going to uh, flash that across the uh, screen. Okay. And, and don't be bothered by the comments being off of there because I, I just could not deal with it. And I don't want you to worry about that. Girl, do you know I get cussed out every day, all day? But it, <laughs> regardless, like... I still, you just it, respect the process. Just keep fighting, keep moving. Okay. And if one person just donates a dollar, okay? And I'm asking if one follower just donates one dollar, it could be 15,000 followers, you can have your surgery. And this, this is not even involving reconstructive surgery. You just want it out. So you're- I walk around with a butt pad for the rest of my life. I'm cool. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I like the direction that you're going in because you are going to start a 501c3. You are going to start a foundation and you're going to set aside money um, and raise money so that when girls like you come in and the ER tells them there's nothing we can do, you got to go to a plastic surgeon or die. They have a place to come. And that's and what matters. That's and that 501c is actually called Positive Image. Oh, you already get, getting it started. Okay. Positive Image. I like that. Okay. 
about no matter what you've been through and who you are, you can always become a positive image in life. Okay. And thank you, Desiree. And please, um, while I'm making this donation here, give me yes, one second. Hopefully my card information is stored. If not, I'm going to call somebody down. Yes, yeah. Um, please tell everyone where they can find you on Instagram and where they can email you if maybe they are suffering from the same thing and they feel like they can't tell anybody because they've put this certain image out. Yes, ma'am. Um, you guys can reach me. I do not have a Facebook. So if you see a Facebook with my name on there, that is not me. I've been having people making fake pages all day long. It's not me. I have one Instagram, and it's the official Smiley Asian Girl. It doesn't have any underscores. It doesn't have anything. Be, be um, aware of the people that are going to try to fool you like they're me because they 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 want something out of it, Okay. the, the process. Okay. Um, I have no Twitter. Okay. I have, I have no Twitter, and I also don't have um, another Instagram page. So I have one Instagram page and one Snapchat. I actually just recently put my number on Instagram for women that want to text me and have any issues and problems. So go ahead, and they're able to text me. I also have my email address on my page where they can just click the email and it'll come straight to me. My email as well is smileyasiangirl at gmail.com and that's S-M-I-L-E-Y A-S-I-A-N G-I-R-L at gmail.com and I'm just, and you can always DM me and it may take me a little second because I have a lot of DMs but I promise, I promise, I promise to DM you back with encouraging words, um, to go ahead and get you through whatever it is that you guys are going through as well. And it doesn't even have to just be butt shots. It could be anything that you're going through, any health issues. I still just want to help other people get through their problems. Okay. All right. So I just donated for 100 people. Like I said, all I need you to do is donate $1, okay? $1 to helping Desiree to get this silicone out of her body. She made a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes, and I'm glad that she was able to get on here and just tell her story and share information that, you know, you don't get every day. You don't get every day. So, and people, and, and surprisingly, girls are still doing this, and they're doing this to become Instagram models, to, you know, to get other opportunities to be in rappers' videos, to become rappers. Yeah. So, thank you, Desiree, okay? Yes, Tasha K. And I really, you really lifted my spirits today. Oh. Yes, I, you really have, like, people are probably like, she doesn't look like she's in pain. That's because I don't want to show it, but thank you so, Aww. so, so. And, and, and if anybody is questioning that, you know, you've posted, you've posted your ER results. Um, on your Instagram, on the Instagram official Smiley Asian. And so you'll, you'll be happy to email them everything. And you've always been very transparent about your life. And that's, that's the one thing that has made me follow you. Cause I'm like this girl from the hood, I'm from the hood. Okay. Yeah. But it didn't matter. It's like you would post without the makeup. You would post, you know, with the makeup, you would post your babies. You would post, you know, twerking with your cute outfits and you posted and shared that, you know, look, I almost almost died and to this day you still haven't told on those people i know that's hood that's hood code <laughs> i know it's the code and i'm just like girl girl but i understand nobody lives where you live you got kids and i understand why you kept quiet but um your your spirit has never been quiet and you literally posted pictures after they almost beat you and thought that they killed you and it was like i'm still smiling and you smile with every scar and I was just like, and I was trying to interview you then, but I was too small. She was like, she's fun with me. <laughs> huh? I, I didn't know what I, like the platform that I had then, I really didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now I actually know what to do with it. Like now I know to fight and to bring awareness and to do these interviews and to talk to people and to help people because now I know because mm -hmm. God already prepared me for it before. 
Okay. It's all good now. So use them to your advantage. And I know you're going to be doing a few other interviews as well. And so, yeah, like yeah. I said, I was happy to donate. And I'll yeah. definitely be pushing this campaign even after we're done with this interview until you reach your goal of just 15000 this, this will be our last interview because once, <laughs> once I'm finished or going through with the surgery, or I want your, your, your people that help me to, to, to still know what I'm going through to stay, to stay updated with my okay. situation. Okay, I see that little one going across the screen. Oh, <laughs> hey, sweetie. Oh, you love your mommy? Oh, she is so cute. I see Minnie Mouse. And you know we're going to show you on the screen, girl. I'm like, she's sassy. Look at her. Blow a kiss. Let me hurry up and go upstairs and get pregnant. Look. <laughs> oh, God. Let me hurry up and go upstairs and get pregnant. But... Um, you want to you want to come home with me? Ah, your mama needs you there, cause you know we love the energy from the babies. They keep us going, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so thank you, and I'm gonna do my signature outing. Okay, now I gotta go. <laughs> Bye. Bye.